Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. Now, on to today's story. Something I noticed with those are cheated on. Rant. I've been reading the posts here and on other infidelity subreddits and I've noticed a pattern with those who have been cheated on, including myself. Most people seem to be too forgiving and perhaps too afraid of conflict to tell their wayward partners to respect the boundaries. Maybe we're too afraid of being controlling or seeming insecure. We ignore red flags and naively think love is enough to make them change. I see story after story of people who try to work through infidelity even though their cheating partner expresses little remorse or continues their disloyal behavior. We think cheaters are normal people with normal feelings of remorse or empathy, when in fact they're suffering from some sort of mental disorder that deprives them of the capacity to empathize with others. They only think about themselves. They are also so adept at lying to themselves that they are likely oblivious to their own transgressions. Perhaps we are too kind and compassionate to those we love, but not kind and compassionate enough to ourselves. Here are the lessons I will take away from this. Never ignore red flags. Communicate boundaries early. Take note of every slip up, even small ones. They have to be able to be honest and self-aware. Even with these guidelines, someone could be very good at lying and hiding the truth so these aren't foolproof. Every potential partner is capable of lying to you and hurting you. These guidelines aren't necessarily new ones as I always thought of them as prerequisites, except for number 3, for dating. But I've tried so hard to be compassionate and understanding of people that I let it go when it came to my recent wayward. Everybody has issues and makes mistakes so who was I to judge? Never again. I will judge when it comes to the people I decide to have in my life. The easiest way to prevent heartbreak like this again is to simply not fall in love again. Which is what I will do for a long time. There are more important things in life than finding a romantic partner to fill that void. When cheating first comes to light, the BS's world is shaken to the core. Often, the BS does not know the full extent of betrayal, and it takes a while to set in. People tend to treat their first exposure to cheating as if they have a medical problem, have the surgery, take your medicine, get some rest, get back to your routine. Our previous life experience teaches us to fix damaging situations and get back to normal. To me, cheating is closer to a crippling accident where full recovery to normal is not possible. Maybe your leg will get better, but you'll always walk with a limp. Your spine is damaged, sorry, it's the wheelchair for you. Think about two partners who have been in business for years. Suddenly, it is discovered that one of the partners embezzles money from the business and cheats his partner. Here the cheated partner seeks restitution and damages, and usually pursues legal retribution against the cheating partner. There is no talk of forgiveness, let's get the business back together and try again. Once you find that you are in business with a crook, you never give them another chance. Being cheated on in business does not threaten our sense of self, our children and ability to function in the world. Your business partner is important to you, but you don't build your life around them, and give them the keys to your soul. Yet cheating in business is dealt with much more harshly. With cheating in a relationship, you often get the advice to let it go and move on, as if it were not a life-altering event. If we attached the importance to our love that we do to our money, cheating would be dealt with much more harshly. Stoning an adulterer was standard punishment at one time, but that was probably overdoing it. Sorry for the rambling comment. The desire to reconcile and forgive the BS comes from the fact that most people don't stop loving the cheater right after they find out. We do all kinds of mental gymnastics to explain it and convince ourselves that they can't be so cruel. We also deal with the brutal and sudden loss of the person we love, our lives, homes and future plans. This is devastating and hard to accept, so instead of accepting it people choose to hang on to the easier and more soothing solution, which is to get back together in hope the dread will pass. Never ignore red flags. 
This is something most learn the hard way, instinct is an evolutionary tool we have which exists to protect us. If the signs are there don't let your so gaslight you and don't do it to yourself. Communicate boundaries early. While certainly true, this won't make cheaters not cheat, especially a few years down the line. Even if they will remember it, the infatuation and rationalization will make them cheat anyway. If they wanna cheat, they will no matter what. While certainly true, this won't make cheaters not cheat, especially a few years down the line. Even if they will remember it, the infatuation and rationalization will make them cheat anyway. If they wanna cheat, they will no matter what. For sure, but when I look back on the times I've been cheated on, there were always signs and violations of previously agreed upon boundaries. They start small but that should be nipped in the bud early. Which is why even tiny slip-ups should be noted. Dude, I have read all of your stories. Did you break up with your current cheating girlfriend? No but I made a recent post about my decision. Basically I know there isn't even one iota of a chance of reconciliation because she's just not capable of it. Horrid girl she is. I'm just going to ghost her. I agree with most of what you have written. The only point where I differ is the difference between love and falling in love. To me falling in love borders on short-lived fantasies about a person that don't reflect the whole person. Love to me is based on many factors that are part of a relationship and those factors are what keep the relationship strong and healthy. I had both. I obviously fell in love hard and ignored the red flags and wanted her to be the person I thought she was. But I also loved her even after the cheating and all her faults came to light. Flaws and all. But she can't see her own faults and doesn't want to and cannot change. Agreed completely. I just think this wisdom only comes after much reflection after suffering through the trauma. We all start dating as naive, optimistic, and romantic people. The cynicism and the ability to see red flags doesn't come until after we've been hurt. The people posting here are likely also in the shock and denial phases of grief, which is what allows people to become doormats and ignore red flags. The weird thing is that I've learned these lessons before. I've been betrayed before and I learned lessons. I've dated and had several serious relationships but had to take a break to work on myself and become a more compassionate, kinder person. But it's obvious I have regressed to let myself fall for such a horrible human being. No, you didn't let yourself fall for a terrible person. You were manipulated into loving an illusion. The most professional sociopaths are no more than actors. They put on a mask and force you to fall in love with them through love bombing and manipulation. They are irresistible. They pretend to be your soulmate. Then they get bored one day and throw you away like trash out of the blue, when you had no idea anything was wrong. The important thing to realize is that you fell in love with an illusion. Like any fictional character, you have to accept that they do not really exist. The same thing happened to me. I don't know what hurt more, the loss of the relationship, or the idea that I fell in love with an illusion. I think I'm one of the rare few that caught them in the act, in my house, in my F king bed. Zero recourse, zero chance for reconciliation. I was gaslighted. Probably, but I'm definitely a person without a lot of grey area on this. There's a line that was crossed, and as soon as it's crossed, marriage is no longer possible. I will die on that hill. Some people aren't as stubborn as me, or are more morally ambiguous, or think staying with a spouse who messes around on you is better for the kids. Nah. You excise the cancer from your life, and you deal with the aftermath of it as it comes. While the cancer is still in you, it will spread and kill you. If you get it out, you have a chance to fix the secondary effects. I hate that this happens to so many people, and I really do wish everyone all the best. I probably have some mental deficit that allows me to flip a switch and jettison people that hurt me emotionally without an issue. I thought I was like that but realized I'm not. Robert De Niro in Heat had it right. I agree with this, at least for myself based on now being cheated 2x, I find it extremely hard to get angry at anything. In daily life, this is mostly a positive as I'm always calm when dealing with emergencies and situations. 
As a partner, it means I let the other partner get away with too much. It could be due to insecure attachment and people-pleasing tendencies as well. I'm in the anger stage now. I'm not a violent or angry person but I fantasize about making her suffer. I hope one day her actions will catch up to her and she'll have a wake-up call. Do you have feelings of revenge? I'm not talking about cheating on your wayward partner to get back. Mine has not just cheated but the way she's done it to me and the others before me was so cruel and selfish it has been really hard to get over. Attempts at reconciliation afterwards were also extremely frustrating and whether conscious or not, it seems she enjoys pissing her partners off and doesn't give a damn about how others feel. She's selfish to an extent I could not believe. Definite narcissistic and psychopathic tendencies. I believe people like her are evil in this world. I find myself wishing for her to suffer. She should never receive love because she only takes it to feed her ego. I fear she will keep doing this to the next poor sap and the next, propagating heartbreak wherever she goes because that's what she has been doing. I'm not going to take out my resentment on another woman I meet but I want this particular person to suffer. I have no real recourse for this of course. The only thing I can think of doing is to ghost her without a breakup so she won't have closure, but I'm sure she'll just quickly find another sap to leech off and she'll be fine. The only other thing is to tell her friends and family of what she's done, she has told some of them to some extent, so they'll know how horrible of a person she is. I'm sure she'll spin the story to make her out to be the victim of a controlling, jealous boyfriend though. I guess over time I'll get over it and there's nothing I can do about one person out of countless other crappy people in the world who spew their crap everywhere. By holding on to this resentment you are still giving her co-trip over your life. Ghost her, if you like. That would probably be good for you too. Just move on and forget about her. She will get what's coming to her. I know. I'll let it go eventually. But I really want to give her the finger on my way out. Be happy, move on and find another GF should be enough. The only revenge is for you to have a better life. Do you have proof of her cheating? She told me. You can look at my post history about it. She slept over at an ex's house, whom cheated on her previous sex with and then cheated on him, when we first started and about two months later she spent the weekend at the previous ex's place. During reconciliation, instead of agreeing to boundaries she gave me all sorts of inane excuses to not keep them which spoke volumes of her selfishness and craziness. Had to keep in contact with her exes, told me she was still in love with one of them, told me her feelings for me weren't really that strong despite multiple talks about how she loved me and saw a future with me. And she is the one who begged me to stay. This is what really pissed me off more than anything because she didn't give a damn about me and tricked me into a toxic relationship. We hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Please comment, like and subscribe. Cheers. Have a wonderful day or night. Wherever you are.